Don. Thank you. So, um, hello everyone again. Salam. Um, my name is Khuram Bhatti. I'm the head of Grand Thornton, Azerbaijan. Uh, I would like to mention initially that we are recording the session and uh, we assume your permission for that. Um, we welcome to all the participants and uh, hope that uh, you all will have a very interesting and uh, an impactful full session. Uh, first of all, we as, uh, as Graham Thornton congratulate all the participants on this great victory of Azerbaijan on Karabakh. Thank you. It, uh, Thank you. It has been an unbelievable success story, which I believe and I hope will keep on motivating even the future generations. So congratulations again. Uh, we want to say special thanks to Azerbaijan Banks Association, uh, who really helped us in organizing uh, this event. And uh, special thanks to Mr. Yunus Abdullah from ABBA, who really took the initiative and, uh, and helped us uh, in organizing on a very short notice. As the topic was very hot and uh, it's really a requirement of the day. That's why we wanted to uh, arrange this webinar as early as possible. And our experts have designed the session, keeping in mind the, uh, the current practical challenges banks are facing, and also considering the heightened risk around the information security and cyber crimes as the technologies are evolving. Um, we all know that banks are always more vulnerable to information security risks and attacks due to the nature of its business while dealing with cash. Therefore, IT audits are have, have enhanced importance for specifically for the banks in this uh, pandemic environment uh, as compared to never before. So we have considered the requirements for central bank around the IT audits. We have also considered the, uh, the focus on, on IT infrastructure, policies, and operations. And um, I would like to mention that even if the, the systems are designed as the best possible systems, still testing the operating effectiveness of this, this design is very critical. And to do this, it's very important that proper penetration testing is done from within the organization or outside the organization and the vulnerability scanning to be done to ensure that banks have really solid controls to safeguard their information security and to safeguard their assets. And that's what uh, we also do while we perform IT audits. So I will quickly introduce our, uh, our experts today. George Stonov, he is our head of advisory uh, from UAE. He is uh, he's expert in transformation advisory with over 20 years of experience uh, with large professional organizations. George really loves Azerbaijan and uh, he has visited uh, many times. He has, he has conducted various risk management assignments in Azerbaijan and really has added value for certain banks and other organizations uh, in transforming their, their risk operations and, and mitigating the risks. He had led various uh, transformation projects, including with some very large banks. And uh, with his experience, he exactly knows how to mitigate the risk. Uh, our second expert will be Glenn Thomas. He's our partner uh, handling technology advisory. And he really has been considered as a as a guru in in handling cyber and information security risks. His detailed CV has been circulated already, so I won't go much into detail, but just to mention that his his precision to details always help our clients to prevent uh, the threats. And he also has more than 20 years of experience successfully delivering information technology and security risk management. And uh, our next uh, expert will be Avik Chandra. He's our director of transformation advisory. Uh, he also has already helped various banks in Azerbaijan uh, for IT audits, 
ISO 27001 certifications and other areas. So um, I will request George to just start, set up the tone, and then Glenn will talk about uh, FinTech, digital banking, and dark web. And then Avik will walk us through the IT and ISO certifications and, and other areas. And uh, towards the end of the presentation, we'll have 15 minutes Q&A session. And I request all of you to please uh, keep yourself muted. Unless you have a question, you can raise hand even during the presentation and, and uh, the present will, will take the question. Thank you very much. Over to you, George. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kuram. And thank you very much, uh, Grand Portan Azerbaijan, uh, yourself, Kuram, and Anar, and the rest of the forum for actually thinking of us and being very close to us to continue working together on this. And first and foremost, the biggest thank you goes to the, to the Banking Association really from the from the bottom of our hearts thank you for inviting us to present to you as uh, as my colleague Kuram said uh, Baku and Azerbaijan has a very a very special place in my heart uh, I'm originally from Bulgaria so you know I always have this uh, the, this connection to to everyone there so it feels always so good to be there and if it wasn't for COVID itself I promise you I personally would have been there to to, to sit uh, among uh, all of you but with that in mind, uh, thank you for, for the honor of presenting to, to you. And you know, from our perspective, I think the biggest uh, component we can add value to you is to share with you the various experience that our team has with respect to information security, with respect to large scale transformations, and with respect to all of our experience with financial services. I think this is very critical, especially towards the end of 2020, when the unknown unknown becomes the, the content creator of risk for all of us and we need to find the right way to, to, to create a solution for this. And I think today we have two amazing experts, my colleagues uh, Glenn and Avec, who walk us through how to actually address some of these key risks uh, from that perspective. We are delighted to be here on the stage and to, to share our experience with you. Please take full advantage of, uh, uh, of us from the perspective of asking questions, how we can help. We are always here, literally one, uh, one Microsoft Teams or Zoom phone call away, and we are always to, to help out. Uh, so without further ado, and not to take away from the time, I'll pass it over to, to Glenn and to Avid to take us through to today's presentation. Thank you very much, George uh, and Karam, for the, the fantastic in, in introduction. I'm, I'm very uh, embarrassed and, and, and appreciative of the of your kind words uh, um, uh, previously. So thank you, and I'd like to uh, echo George's words as well as uh, thank you very much to the the Banking Association and all attendees for giving us the opportunity to come and talk to you about uh, you know uh, matters within the, the financial industry but also specifically looking at you know it audit and security compliance for banks as um uh, karam mentioned i have a little bit of experience in in working in the financial sector and in fact just prior to moving over to the middle east about three three and a half years ago now um, i had my own um, fintech business i guess you could call that where we were using biometrics uh, to do work, help an organization process a KYC onboarding and payment verification processes within a digital banking perspective. So um, I, I've been lucky enough to deal with banking institutions um, and, and from, from third party providers all the way through to the inst uh, institutions themselves throughout the Asia Pacific Indo-Pac and now you know, um, in the Middle East region as well. Um, and it was interesting, I've, I've just spent the last couple of days um, being part of a, uh, a session held, FinTech session held here by ADGM in Abu Dhabi. And uh, it was really interesting to see some of the, the advancements in the FinTech area. Um, I, I was on another webinar when they were talking about uh, uh, blockchain and how blockchain can be utilized within the in the in, in the finance sector even more so than it is now and looking at a number of different 
use cases uh, for, for blockchain. Um, and uh, I was just on a call um, right between, uh, sorry, just before this current call with a bank in, uh, in Saudi who are working with a fintech organization for the very first time. And we're conducting a cyber risk assessment um, uh, 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 for them to ensure that they've got a great degree of, of, of security um, around that interaction. And, and I think that's one of the major concerns um, with institutional organisations such as traditional banks. Um, when they transition and try to move to adopt digital banking, digital assets, etc., there is a, a reluctance, I guess, to some extent. And rightly so, because there is a movement towards the unknown. Um, and, and so I really enjoy interacting and working with those types of organisations as they test the boundaries and, and the horizons on what's possible um, in, in, in delivering services in, in, a, in a digital perspective for their clients as banking evolves throughout the region. And it's a really exciting journey that, that we're, 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 we're going on right now and and i think it's great that the the you know the, the uh, azerbaijan banking association is with us as well because i think one of the biggest challenges that we see with the adoption of technology fintech etc is <coughs> the lag between the regulator and the, and what's being um what's being implemented and and, and uh, you know it's very interesting i saw uh, one example of this just recently where a, um, a, a digital bank, completely digital bank, came to me and said, can you do me a risk assessment? Um, you know, we've prepared all this. They spent lots of money developing their platform. Uh, they came to me, uh, we have a problem. We've done all this. We've just gone to the regulator and the regulator says, well, that particular part needs to be done by person um, at, at a particular location. So... Whilst they did a lot of pre preparation, they didn't really go down to the regulator um, and they didn't clarify them with them what was exactly needed. They managed to get an exemption. They worked with the regulator and the regulator is changing. But it's just an example of what's happening. And I think this is a good opportunity if I could, um, you know, perhaps if we could talk in the, into the future with the Banking Association, how, um, you know, we see other regulators trying to keep ahead of the curve as opposed to trying to catch up. And, and, and before I hand over to, to Avic, I guess some of the other tools that we're seeing that are being used uh, globally to help an organization, be it the financial sector uh, uh, or, or what have you, is not only the VAPT that uh, Karam mentioned, but utilization of other tools, of AI um, and robotics, et cetera, to help an organization understand what their digital footprint is like on the open web. And we use tools to help us search the dark web to understand whether there's a potential attack um, or selling of credentials um, or the leak, uh, leakage of documents from an organization on the dark web. And we're able to advise our clients, you know what, this is something that you need to look at. It's good to look at the outside do your VAPT from the inside and then bring it together with a red teaming exercise to give yourself a full understanding of, of the security of your organization. And, and we're seeing that that being adopted by a number of different organizations throughout the fintech sector, but also more, more widely. So look, that's just a bit of an introduction on, on what, uh, uh, you know, what really wakes me up in the mid, in the middle of the night thinking I want to get involved in and and, and drives me through the day. So I, I'd love to have a, um, a more complex and, and long conversation um, about these particular product, uh, you know, subjects and, and trends within the financial sector. But I guess today, one of the things that we really wanted to focus on was those IT audit and information security compliance within the banking sector. So with that in mind, um, I thank you very much for the time, the opportunity to have this quick introduction. Um, uh, I'll let Avik, who is uh, our Associate Director looking after um, our technology um, stream, IT audits within our tech and cyber practice at Grant Thornton, to, to run you through the rest of the deck. Thank you very much. Avik, over to you. Thank you so much, Glenn. A very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, before I start, just to give you a brief about myself, 
Uh, I have been practicing technology for almost uh, 15 years now, uh, primarily on digital transformation, the technology due diligence, IT audits, and, and also cybersecurity. Uh, have been with uh, several firms before, with big four firms, with, with uh, other consulting firms, and also currently working with Grant Talken for almost four years. Have been with the uh, Azerbaijan office uh, before last year. Uh, I think uh, we have interacted with a few of your colleagues uh, in, in banks uh, during this time frame, just to talk about the importance of IT audit and, and also the information security compliance in banks. So with this, I will start the presentation. So in the next 45 minutes, uh, we have divided this presentation into four, four different sections. We are going to talk about the dependency of banking operations in IT. Today, you know, it's nothing new that entire banking is dependent on technology and technology platforms, right? So we will talk about that, how it relates with uh, how the banking operations and technology uh, link with each other, and, uh, and also the importance of IT audit in, in banks. Then we also will focus on the different aspects of IT audit. What are the different areas which you need to cover up as part of IT audit in, in terms of uh, in banking sector? And, and we will go in detail approach on how you should look at different different areas of risk, different areas of uh, you know improvement with respect to technology and banking sector. And last but not the least, we will we will close it down with some of the key takeaways for you, which hopefully you can relate to your business and and also action upon in the near future. So with this, uh, I, I mean, uh, we'll start the presentation. Uh, today is nothing new or no surprise at all that the entire infrastructure of banking operations are completely relied on technology. I mean, if you talk about today, there's a recent research happened, uh, which which I was reading over the news, I think a couple of days back, that 60% of our customers today are want uh, are do banking through online mode. So digital online banking or digital only bank is, is, is the new norm, I would say, post COVID era, and it is going to be the new norm for the next few years to time. In addition to that, I think there are several initiatives has been in, uh, taken up by different banking institutions, regulatory bodies across the globe in, in terms of technology. Something to mention about AI, machine learning, robotics are thriving to detect not only the payment frauds or, or improving your process in terms of credit risk and so on, but also more predominantly on improving customer satisfaction. Big data remain as big as it was before and it is still helping most of the key decision makers in bank on informed decision making. And last but not the least, there is a predominant uh, predominant uh, growth on, tradi on, on new way of doing banking in terms of new technology platforms, in terms of mobile app wallets, in terms of contactless payments and so on. So with this in mind, uh, we can say today that without technology without uh, without the complete due diligence of technology it is very it's very difficult for us to run the banking operations so if you talk about banking operations you know we, we talk about obviously the core banking operations we talk about the support functions which which you which you have which is supporting the core banking operations we talk about payment operations and so on so all these things are, are, are either automated in your banks or 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 maybe you are using different technologies to basically process and, and do your daily activities and providing services to your customers. And this is nothing but maybe you are using some kind of core banking solutions like T24 or FlexLube or some kind of backbone systems like an SAP or Oracle, which can be acting as an ERP or, or other way like a payment system like Swift or, or say for example, RTGs and so on. So all this are interlinked into a single platform of technology and entire, entire background of your banking process today is dependent on technology and technology processes, right? So, so, to, so there, that's the of technology today uh, you need to look at in, when, you, when you talk about banking operations and when you talk about financial technologies and so on. So banks cannot rely on IT systems or the data generated from them without having an effective IT controls in place. And it, this is very important because today you are completely uh, dependent on technology and to ensure that your data and the information which you are storing in, in, in different platforms of, of banking 
maybe you know some data with respect to your customers, some data with respect uh, to 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 the lending customers in terms of loans and so on. So how how can you assure that all these data are complete or accurate or 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 having the right uh, right information in place? So to ensure all these things, it is very important today that you conduct you know, IT due diligence or IT audit. Where, uh, where you have a certain mechanism in place inside your bank uh, where to ensure that you have the data confidentiality, integrity, and at and, and any point of time, the availability of data. So this is very important. And without having the IT controls in place, the, the operational or the IT and the infosec, and consequently, the financial objectives cannot be efficiently and effectively achieved today. Uh, in the in the era of technology dependent organizations, or I will say in the era of of uh, new technologies or fintech, the way it is growing uh, over the last few years. So 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 that's why IT audit is one of the list of all the CTOs and and CIOs I will say today, and more importantly also the chief internal auditors. IT audit is something which most of the banks does it. The difference what has happened over the last one year or so is that. It is not only about looking IT from, from a standalone perspective in terms of only looking at a payment system or a kind of ERP application or a kind of only general controls or looking or only looking after the cyber part of it. Today, you know, most of the CTOs and, and the CIOs are looking IT as a comprehensive, comprehensive uh, subject, where when they talk about IT audit, they not only talk about the, the general controls or, or the core banking systems, they also talk about their card operations. They also talk about their payment operations. They also talk about SWIFT. They also talk about you know, regulatory requirement which they have to comply with respect to central bank and so on. So it is a comprehensive uh, audit. It is a comprehensive journey today you know, where banks, uh, most of the banks are looking forward and, 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 and ensure, ensuring that all the best practices and the regulatory requirements are complied with. So as part of IT audit, the primary objective, you know, if I have to say of IT audit is to ensure that you have the right information system in place, which protect your confidentiality, which, which ensure your availability, as well as which uh, also ensure your data integrity. So these are the three key areas or the three key objectives through which you can, uh, you can achieve through an IT audit. How you can achieve it? That that is that is something we are going to talk about in the next few slides. Now, as I have highlighted uh, just now, that you know it's not about one single area of IT audit or one single operations or one single uh, you know subject of IT audit. It's a holistic approach today. Most of the CTOs and uh, CIOs need to look upon when they talk about IT audits. Now, if you see this slide, you know it talks about the six six building blocks or six uh, different areas where. Today, bank is looking forward when they are talking about uh, protecting their technology environment and how they can comply with leading uh, standards. The first one is obviously it's a mandatory for any organizations or any banks operating in any particular country to comply with the, the central bank regulation with respect to information technology, as well as to comply with certain standards which different bodies of technology come through, like ISOs or like COBIT, like ISACA and so on. So these are some of the regulatory requirements which uh, most of the banks uh, have to comply with, and this is also slowly emerging. We have seen several uh, regulations came up recently on central banks, from different central banks across the globe, and also we know with Central Bank of Azerbaijan, there are uh, regulations which you need to comply with with respect to information technology. In addition to that, the next uh, important things which uh, obviously you know a bank should look at in terms of IT is the IT general controls. Now, I personally say IT general controls is a hygiene factor to implement technology in any organization. Without IT general controls or without the right practices of the general controls, you cannot sustain any technology platform. Now, what do you mean by IT general controls? It predominantly talks about the IT systems in terms of applications, operating systems, databases, infrastructure change management, access control management, and so on. So it covers the each and every aspects of IT on, on a broader level, and it touch bases each and every aspects and nitty gritties of, of the IT in the back end. So this is a kind of a baseline, I will say, you need to have it, or any organization need to have it when they are implementing technology. 
and especially for bank this is something which you need to have it at a level where most of the controls or most of the you know you know requirements with respect to it general controls need to be complied with to run the banking operations the next important one which is very much predominant and this is not a new one this is also a traditional banking audit which we have seen based on our experience of working with different banks is on the core banking and also on the payment payment system audit so when we talk about core banking audit you know core banking obviously covers modules of core banking in terms of treasury trade finance uh, in terms of uh, you know overall operations transaction banking and so on whereas there is another aspects of core banking which we, which which basically uh, we cover it as a kind of erp system or a support system uh, you know that that is something like you know maybe hr procurement finance and so on is covered in that so these are something which you already have it and i i assume that most of the banks follow that but the important or the drastic change which we have seen uh, over the last uh, one year or so is that most of these operations have been now moved to a stage where you have leveraged ais or machine learning and made it with almost uh, you know there is lack of there is no human intervention at all there, absolutely it is done through through robotic uh, mechanism and more importantly i think also there are a lot of banks who has moved into completely digital online bank so these are the two key areas which has came up over the last one or two years which we are seeing with quite a number of our clients in in, in different markets and we we think that this is one of the critical area where the banks need to be much more proactive in terms of reviewing their internal infrastructure with respect to it in in spe specifically on the core banking aspects part of it because today you know since you are moving into digital mode you are completely exposed to um, you know with with your customers and also with your different different intermediaries and other other stakeholders on all all the platforms so it is very important for you to have that uh, you know quick check or a periodic check on on or your integration between your digital or the front end mode along with your middleware and and the back end mode the fourth one which is also very important and i and, and i think most of the banks comply with this is on the card operations so we all know that you know the pci dss which is the payment card industry data security standard is is mandatory for for all the card operations to comply with and and you know no matter whatever card you are using can if you are using mastercard or a visa card this is basically a regulation you need to comply with and i think most of the banks have this but the thing which which sometime we have seen missing with with some of the banks uh, is the periodic vulnerability management of the card operations once you comply with that so that is something which i think we need to look at on a much more proactive basis considering the fact that lot of lot of uh, you know fraud fraudulent activities have have happened over the last few years only due to the lack of you know lack of right controls in place on 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 your card operations the next area which we would like to highlight is on the swift uh, most of the banks use swift for payment processing and payment message processing so there is also a regulatory requirement from swift perspective to comply with swift standards and also do a kind of regular or periodic self assessment to ensure that you are complying with the swift security control framework and last but not the least uh, you know the information in the cyber security Uh, you know this is very important that you know if you have certain kind of standard already in place to manage that something like an ISO 27001 standard is a global practices followed by different banking institutions uh, also also mandated some of the central banks in some of the countries is mandated to implement and certify your banks with ISO 27001 certification um, along with a periodic uh, you know VAPT a periodic penetration testing need to be done to ensure that you are protected from both internal internal and external threats along with uh, what glenn has mentioned about the dark web search so this is a kind of a different way of doing it audit you know if you if you if you talk about it audit today we are seeing most of the banks are not only looking for any one particular area but more on a more predominantly on a holistic area and this is what uh, we will like to give you the message also so that you can look at it so what we will do in subsequent slide is predominantly let you know how how we how you can approach an it audit in general and more predominantly on each and every uh, each of the six areas how detail you can go and what are the controls you need to 
take care of with respect to IT audit. So, so another very important part of IT audit today, you know, uh, this is something which we used to do, but uh, we we never used to do before on on a con consistent basis. Is you know having some of the frameworks, uh, standards, and frameworks, and also the quality and value management embedded with our IT audit approach or IT audit methodology. Now that is very important because uh, today you know, there are several standards which we need to comply with, uh, several new initiatives uh, which we need to comply with. M moreover, we need to com uh, comply with a lot of regulatory requirements. And last but not the least, also you know you need to ensure that you need you have a continuous reassessment practice in place for any kind of technology investments, right? So what uh, what this framework covers is all these aspects in terms of st standards and framework along with quality and value management. And it is a four phase framework. What we are talking about is the first phase. What we try to do here is predominantly, you know, you need to understand who is basically impacted by the uh, by by the technology which you are using. That is very important to start with uh, because from the user's perspective, from the customer's perspective today, we need to look at how how they are using the technology and how they are uh, basically trained or enabled to use the technology and what are the areas of risk we can identify from there so you know you're not talking only about from the technology perspective but you know you are predominantly talking from from the users and from the human human beings perspective how can you identify those key stakeholders who can contribute to the audit exercise you know, I, uh, we, I can quote a recent study which has been conducted by a recent consulting uh, by a consulting firm, which predominantly mentions that 90% of of the technology, uh, you know, problem or technology controls issues are, are predominantly raised because of users or because of human beings and 10% is only to do with technology. So this goes to show that, you know, the approach of IT or the approach of doing IT audit is not only to understand the best practices, not, not only to bring those right control in place with respect to technology, but also to understand from the users and from the stakeholders perspective, what exactly they are trying to do or you know, embrace with that technology and subsequently we can find those risks and document those risks. So the second stage is the risk assessment and prioritization framework, which we do before, which we need to do before any kind of IT audit exercise irrespective of any area you do it, it is very important to do a risk assessment because that will basically help you in having a comprehensive picture of the entire organization and more predominantly, you know, the, the risk or, or, or the challenges where different corners or different sectors or different departments of the, of, of the organization can face through. After you do the risk assessment, which I think most of the banks or, you know, previously never used to do that, they directly used to go to the audit. But today, you know, we are looking since we are moving into an era where we have to do a kind of comprehensive audit and not a standalone kind of audit. It is very important to do a risk assessment before you do a kind of IT audits. And then obviously you do the IT audits with respect to design level controls and, and operating level con control effectiveness. This is very important. So as part of design level controls, you might be knowing it is much more at the governance level as well as on at the, at the planning level in terms of documentations, policies, processes, and so on. I will talk about it in detail in the next slide. And, and in terms of operating effectiveness is much more on the operational level, you know, how the practices have been followed, what are the risks which you, you which might be encountered during the practice and so on. So that's the third phase. And last but not the least, you know, today it's not audit, an audit exercise is not only about recommending and, and mitigating, but more importantly, how can you enhance your operations, right? So IT audit is used by a lot of banks today, not only to find, um, uh, you know, or, or find or identify the risk in, the, in their existing practices, but more predominantly, how can they look for new opportunities or how, how can they embrace new technologies to enhance their business operations? So that is another mindset change which we have, you know, observed over the last one year, I will say, with, with banking and financial sector. So to go more on, on the framework which we talked about in the previous slide, you know, an IT audit exercise, no matter whatever may be the scope, it's basically covered into four different aspects. Uh, so the first one is on the governance part of it, where we predominantly talk about 
the IT governance framework in terms of delivery planning, in terms of optimization of risk and resources, and also state stakeholder management. So this is something at the design level, which you talk about the design and operating effectiveness. This comes at the design level, along with the planning processes, which again, we talk about strategy, we talk about policies, we talk about how you manage uh, different portfolios of IT, different supplier management, and so on. Uh, so this is again another planning, I will say, or the design level effectiveness, which we have to check no matter whatever you, we do it across all these aspects. The next one is on the operating level, which predominantly I will say covers in the IT implementation phase uh, or the process as well as the IT, IT delivery process. These are the two uh, you know, processes where we, we basically go deep dive and, and check the operating effectiveness. So check what are the practices which you have been followed, what are the risks, or whether there is any kind of non-compliance with the regulatory requirements or, reg or, or non-compliance with the standards which has been set up by the banks and so on, right? So this we go at deep level to understand the nitty gritties of different aspects of technology in terms of infrastructure, you can say, in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of applications, in terms of obviously security and so on. So let us now move to the six aspects which I talked about in the previous slide, you know, in detail, more detail and, and just specify and I would like to specify also what exactly we are going to look at at each and every aspect of audit. The first one to do an IT audit, it is very important that uh, for any bank who, I mean, wherever he, he or uh, wherever the bank is, it may be, to comply with your regulatory requirements. And, and obviously the central bank regulatory requirement needs to be complied with. There are specific regulations which you have in Azerbaijan also from Central Bank, which you need to comply with. And that's a minimum requirement which you need to have uh, if you, if you, uh, if you, you know, implementing technology. And obviously all the banks have implemented technology. So these are the minimum requirements If you see in, in the diagram. In, these are the minimum uh, requirements which you need to have as part of, part of uh, you know, as part of implementing technology. First one, if I have to talk about, you need to have uh, trainings on information security. Uh, so obviously, you know, to information security is not directly with, with related to IT, but information security is, is also uh, as a, at a broader level, it, it goes within the organization. So you need to ensure that each and every uh, resources or employees of the banks, al along with your suppliers and customers and all the, your intermediaries, understand the importance of information security. So all these controls, like one is information security, there are also mobile devices and teleworking whenever you are dealing with mobile banking, you need to have certain kind of controls which has been prescribed by, by the regulatory. Same similar goes with patch management and vulnerability, you need to follow certain standards of patch management, you know, like you know, you need to periodically review the patches and when you upgrade the patches, you need to document those patches so, and also before going live on all those patches, you need to do a testing of those patches. So these are some of the best practices, some of the controls which you need to respect and we need to basically comply with to ensure that you are compliant with the regulatory standard. Along with that, you know, obviously there's some something called ISO 220, commonly for the banking sector. And this is used for standardizing the exchange of electronic message between different banks or different financial institutions. Now, Obviously, this is not directly goes to the bank, but you know the message system which you're using, say for example, maybe Swift or Visa, they all have to comply with this. Now, if you're using those, obviously, you know ISO 20, uh, 222 is important to comply with because this is a, one of the mandatory requirements which you need to comply. So, regulatory requirement in a nutshell is is the base to start any IT audit because that is that is something which. Uh, you know, any banks has to do it. It, it is it is not good to have, but a must have, I will say, uh, in terms of implementing any kind of technology. The next one, IT general controls audit. Uh, you know, IT general control audit is uh, predominantly divided into uh, seven factors where we do a kind of, uh, where basically you need to do a kind of overview of your hygiene factor of overall technology environments in terms of IT governance, whether you have the right governance structure in place, uh, whether you have the right governance to deal with different users, different, different departments, different stakeholders, and also with your third party service providers, right? So that is very important and how you are dealing with that. What are the different SLAs which you have it to ensure that uh, you know, you're following certain kind of practice? Uh, 
and so on. The next one is access management. This is very, very common in most, most of the industries, not only in banks, where we need to ensure that the access provisioning of the resources to the system. You know, we are using in banks, we might use several system and we might not have also a single sign on, right? We might have different user IDs for different systems. So in those cases, how can we ensure that the access management of the resources are, are managed properly there is, and also the segregation of duties are properly been taken care of? That is another point which you need to look at. I do understand that you surely have this in place, but how can you periodically review and, and automate this process is something which you need to look at in terms of access management. Uh, change management, uh, any changes happening to the infrastructure or applications, obviously that has to be done through a proper testing. That needs to be done with proper approvals from different stakeholders who is impacted by that change. And more importantly, it has to be documented and approved in, 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 and has to be kept in a repository, right? So change management is another area we have seen that whatever changes happening in different you know, different uh, systems, different applications in banks, generally documented, it gets documented, but now if there is any changes happening in, say, for example, if you're leveraging some third party provider with respect to cloud environment or any infrastructural changes, you are doing it. Uh, we have seen based on our experience that, you know, some of, some of the banks don't capture those things. But as for the standards, as for the best practices, it is very important that you capture each and every changes which is happening in your technology environment. Uh, next is asset management. Uh, this is nothing but to keep IT assets. Today, we are not only talking about IT assets here because we are moving into an era where we are talking about information assets. So it is very important that you keep a repository of information assets with proper uh, you know, asset management as well as asset tagging. Performance and capacity management is very important today because it was not maybe that important few years back. But today, with the with the with the way technology is moving and 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 whatever changes is happening on technology and what is whatever change is going to happen in the next few years, I think the CTOs and the CTO needs to look at performance and the capacity management on a on a kind of on a on a kind of uh, I will say an exercise exercise on a yearly basis where they have to capture the same in their strategy to ensure that they have the right capacity, right availability in place, you know, to leverage or to embrace any new technology they are looking for in, 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 the, in the new year. Infrastructure management is, is, is uh, most of the banks will have this uh, scenarios and we do understand that we, this is one of the strong controls most banks and financial institutions have is in terms of having the right practices in the data center having the right practices as a backup or a DR side. However, you know, we have seen some of the banks uh, in, in different different geographies have automated the entire process in terms of, uh, you know, moving not moving to a complete automation or a complete uh, backup side where uh, backup side where you don't have to kind of, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, rely on a cold side or a, or a hot side, but a kind of a warm side kind of thing. Uh, last but not the least, incident and problem management. Uh, this is a traditional practice. So this is, I think, more or less I have seen uh, is absolutely fine with most of the banks. But, you know, it's it's very important also considering the scale of operations and the scale of, uh, you know, applications you have it. You, you might have, you know, n number of incidents and problems on a daily basis, right? How can you completely automate the entire process? It's not only about having an application to manage IT services uh, or incidents and problems, but how can you automate the entire process where basically leveraging certain robotics and so on, where a robot can, uh, you know, identify a kind of incident which has already been identified before and can act action on that. So I think most of the banks also, especially the digital banks are looking or rather implementing such kind of solution. And this is something to look forward for the banks. Uh, moving on to the next area of audit, which I talked about out of the six areas, this is a very important area, which I think predominantly banks look at is the application part of it. Now for, for, for the understanding of the applications, if you see, you know, generally an application, and this is a kind of an in indicative slide where, you know, an application layer of, of a banking infrastructure generally is, is divided into eight different layers. The first will be obviously the front end channels or the channel layer, I will say, where you will have the mobile banking, the internet banking, the branch banking and so on. And, and that is some areas which you need to capture part of it. 
The second is obviously the service of the front office layer in terms of uh, the customer service management, in terms of treasury front office and 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 back back wide loyalty, bank wide loyalty and so on. The third one is the risk enterprise risk management layer. Uh, the fourth one will be your predominantly the core banking layer, where which we talk about the transaction banking, the treasury management, the cash management, uh, terms deposits, and and etc. Uh, the fifth layer is the BI layer, uh, the business intelligence layer, I would say, which which basically sits on the core banking layer or the ERP. Automatically change. Hello. Yes. Hi. Yes. Okay, so I will I will continue. So I think the 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 fifth layer is the BI layer, and the sixth layer will be the ERP, the support function layer. And last but not the least, obviously we will have the payments or the external layers like RTGS, Swift, uh, you know, SMS gateway, and so on. So the purpose of putting this together, you know, again, the same point which I want to put it, it's not only about looking into one applications, like, you know, you might say that I will only look, try to look at payment system like RTGS audit or or maybe, you know, uh, Swift and so on. Or you might say that you, you might only look at mobile banking. So the way the bank is moving, the, the you know, the way the technology is moving, we see that all these layers are somehow or the other these days, and the information is flowing from each and every aspects of this layer. So it is very important for, for, for banks to take up any kind of review of the technology environment as, as a holistic manner, because that is only way, that is the only way you can basically identify any kind of loopholes or risk in your entire technology environment. Otherwise, you know, sometimes it gets difficult or sometimes might get missed, uh, you know, with, with overall, uh, without doing the overall picture of, of IT. In addition to that, this is something which uh, we are predominantly focusing on the core banking and payments. So what exactly you know you you generally have to do in terms of control testing if you have to do a fine kind of IT audit by yourself. Uh, if I talk about transaction monitoring system, which is nothing but an AML system, I, we basically how what you do is as a part of technology or automated controls, you need to test whether you have the right automated controls for scenario testing uh, as per the defined parameters based on the requirement of your bank and also see that whether the alerts have been generated and at the right time uh, it has been generated and how the configuration has been done on that system. And last but not the least, obviously for any kind of system when we talk about in banks, it can be core banking, it can be AML, it can be payment system, you need to check the interface testing part of it. So that is very important where you know you need to check how the system is being integrated with different system in this case for say for example transaction transaction monitoring the integration will be predominantly for with the banking or the core banking transactions uh, system and for the digital banking which i think uh, has become very popular over the last few years considering the most of the you know most of the customers are you know prefer to do online banking or prefer to do mobile banking and that's the reason I think, uh, you know, the risk of uh, cyber threats or the risk of external hacking uh, has increased in, 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 in banks, right? So you need to ensure that obviously in terms of infrastructure, you need to have a separate zone, which we call it as a DMZ zone uh, of all those such kind of front end channels to be hosted and also periodically review of, of your entire infrastructure to ensure that, you know, there shouldn't be any kind of leakage uh, from DMZ zone to your internal internal infrastructure of, of your bank. So you, you can obviously conduct a kind of dark web search, you can conduct a kind of pen test at that point of time to, to ensure that this is this is being protected at any point of time. Uh, the next one obviously will be payment system. Now payment system, uh, you know, you can talk about anything like RTGS, you can talk about Swift, and this is something uh, we follow IT general controls, which I have explained it to you in the previous slides. All the controls of IT generals, uh, generals uh, is applicable to the payment system. In addition to that, in addition to that, I think the very important thing which also we check is on the fallback arrangements what you have in in terms of uh, payment systems. 
and also the reliability of customer data, uh, customer data confidentiality, and also the security controls in terms of network, in terms of applications, in terms of databases, and so on. So see, these are the some of the areas which you need to look at, uh, especially if you are from IT, you need to look at on a periodic basis to ensure that your payment systems are working fine. Uh, in terms of core banking, in terms of core banking, obviously, you know, uh, I don't have to do, go in detail because you are, you might be doing this or you are doing it. So predominantly what we do is that for core banking, we check certain kind of application controls. Now these application controls are divided into three layers and how it is divided is that, you know, it is to ensure that you have the completeness, integrity, authorization and authentic, auth authenticity of the information. Uh, what we do is that we divide basically the application controls into three areas, which is organizational, procedural, and technological. And how you should do this uh, application control exercise, you need to uh, have three important aspects to take care. When we do any kind of application control or any kind of core banking, uh, you know, system review. The first one is obviously from the business perspective, from the process automation perspective, whether it is meeting the requirement of your business and whether it is aligning with your processes. That is the most important thing. The second one is overall on the management part of it, overall management, project management, and service management part of it. How how the, the different areas of project management and overall implementation management has been managed and how much changes you are getting, how much you know incidents you are getting and so on, how you are monitoring and how you are recovering those uh, things. So that is very important. So when you do such kind of application audit, you need to ensure that how many incidents you get, got from a core banking system, say for example, and how many uh, incidents has been uh, resolved on a timely basis, and more importantly, whether those incidents are also coming up in the near future. So that is something an, as an improvement area which needs to be taken care of as part of application audit. And last but not the least, which is very important, which we talk about the system controls. Now, system basically are predominantly divided into four categories of system controls, which is again further divided into nine categories. Now, these are the four categories of system controls which you need to test when you are doing any kind of application audit in banks. Right? The first one is obviously we talked about the system access. Now, here not only we check take care of the access, uh, segregation of duties, but also we we check you know from a holistic point of view how the access has been provided for different modules or for different applications and predominantly how it has been documented and how you are managing a kind of role based matrix for different application. So that is that is very important and this has to be agile mode. So any role based matrix, any kind of documentation uh, access control review has to be done on a frequent basis on a, on a almost on a quarterly basis for the bank to ensure that you, you are, you know, you are complied with certain kind of best practices and predominantly from from any kind of security risk. The next one is on the interface control. This is predominantly the most challenging area, which you know, based on our experience, we have we review the banking operations and and banking system audit, and we perform rather is you know how can how can we basically check uh, what are the information passing from different systems and how can we check the authenticity of the data. Now it is not about input and output from one. It is not about comparing the output and the input of two different systems, but more predominantly what data has been transferred. So we go, uh, you need to go at that level to see whether into the interface design has been properly, uh, you know, designed. And maybe when you bring any kind of new system, you know, this is something which which is very, uh, you know, important to note here is that say for example tomorrow you decide to implement a new system where you will be integrating with any of your existing system. So it is very important to perform a kind of testing at the interface control level to ensure that not only that interface but all the interface interfaces in the banks you know in the in the in your banking landscape application landscape has been taken care has been tested as a kind of regression testing the third one which is very important is on the input output and data processing controls this is something which uh, you know basically protect any kind of uh, uh, any kind of data loss or any kind of uh, inaccurate data if you have the right kind of input control and the data processing control in place. So this has to be done at the configuration level of the bank. And what you need to do is that when you do a such kind of audit, it is not only about uh, reviewing the system, but go uh, taking 
you know, complete access of the system, maybe in a test environment or in a queue environment, and perform the entire entire testing on there to ensure that the right input and the right output and the data processing controls are inbuilt in the system. Last but not the least, the system configuration review. This also includes a bit of source code review. So you need to understand how the system has been configured and whether the system is configured in a way that if we, if I want to scale that system, uh, you know, it, it will be a smooth journey. So that is something which you need to look at uh, in terms of system con configurations. And so what I want to say is that, you know, most of these audits, whatever you have seen, maybe you, you do it on a regular basis or you might be doing it with some some help from any third party, but the important factor uh, what we want to mention here is all this audit, the process of doing all these different aspects of audit has changed a bit considering the uh, the the way technology has moved over the last few years. You know, today when we talk about uh, digital banking, all these important aspects become so important that we we have to go and put more effort on a kind of interface controls or a more effort on the system configurations. So when you when you distribute the effort in an IT audit, it is very important to understand the right you know you need to have the right knowledge and the right expertise in place, and you need to have the right skills to judge where to test and where to invest more time on on checking different aspects of technology the next one we talk about the card operation this is the fourth area of audit which i think a bank predominantly looks at and you should look at if you're not doing it i'm sure if you're using card and most of the banks will have it you 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 are complied with payment card industry data security standard and this is something which uh, is very important if you are basically processing, storing, or transmitting any kind of payment card data, you need to comply with this standard. And this standard, you know, this is not a new standard. This is an old standard, I think almost 15 years old standard. This came from, from the card providers like, you know, MasterCard, Visa, uh, Amex, and two other card folders. It is very important, but I know, I think most of the banks have, we have seen are complied with this standard. The only thing which we like to highlight here is that it's not only about compliance, but they also talk about the standards also talk about a periodic review of your vulnerability management program. So that means that you need to conduct a kind of periodic application security testing uh, with including the web application testing and also your in internal application testing. So that is very important as part of this program, program to compliance with the PCI DFS uh, when we talk about card operations. The next one is on the SWIFT, uh, SWIFT uh, Security Control Framework. Again, if you're using SWIFT, uh, I do understand this is mandated by SWIFT that any bank has to comply with this standard. And basically you have to do a kind of self-assessment every year, irrespective of once you comply with, you have to do a kind of self-assessment each and every year to ensure that you are following their, their practices and objectives. So what SWIFT says basically for all the banks is, uh, you know, they have distributed the uh, internal security controls into three different objectives. By one is securing your environment, or the practices you need to have to secure your environment, which is basically divided into you know, four different principles. No and limit access is predominantly on, on the access control part of it, the privilege access and so on. How can you ensure that, um, you know, in case of any kind of compromise happens on access control, what are the mitigating controls you need to have? and so on. So this is also covered with two principles. And last but not the least, the incident management part of it, the detect and respond part of it, how you uh, how you action on it if you find any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of means which, which is not as per the standards, right? Or any kind of non-compliance and so on. So this three objective has been uh, tr basically translated into eight principles. And they talk about 29 controls and SWIFT predominantly keep on changing these controls what they do is that, you know, if, if you talk about 2018, mm. they used to have around out of controls, they used to have around 15 controls. Now in 2019, they came up with additional four controls where they told that, you know, you need to now have a, have to comply with mandatory 19 controls. Now these are kind of security baseline. You need to have it, it's a must have. You need to implement that if you are using Swift. Now 2020 due to COVID, uh, they have not issued anything, but uh, you know, obviously they have already told maybe whoever is dealing with SWIFT, you might know that, you know, maybe in early next year, they will come up with further enhancement of the controls. So that's why the self-assessment on a yearly basis is very important for any banks 
with to comply with Swift uh, CSCF framework. The next one is ISO 27001. Uh, this is uh, something which is uh, uh, we have seen a lot of banks are complied with. A lot of banks have done this exercise and also most of the banks are certified with this also. Now ISO 27001 based on our experience of working with several banks, we can say that this is again a kind of backbone which protects you from the information security. If you have, are certified or if you implement ISO 27001 practice, you can tell that you know at least from, from the best practices globally, you have the right information security practice in place, at least at the design level, which is very important because you know if you don't have that in place, it is very, very difficult for you to build uh, any kind of security, you know, uh, tools or security mechanisms. So all the security tools or all the security mechanisms or processes in whatever is there in the market, they predominantly based on obviously as a base as ISO 27001. So what ISO 27000 comes up with that they come up with 10 mandatory clauses which you need to comply with. Uh, so when, when I say 10 clauses, it's basically from four to 10. So it is actually seven clauses where you know any organization who who is trying to implement ISO 27001 has to do that otherwise you know you will not get any kind of certification and then the rest of 114 controls which is basically distributed into 15 control families this is based on the risk assessment based on the obviously nature of your you know banking operation and more predominantly based on your business requirements you need to implement these controls Having said that, you know this. This is again a kind of uh, a journey which you need to follow if you plan to do ISO 27001 compliance. But this is one of the good practices which we have seen uh, most of the banks go for because this is a base to do anything on information and cybersecurity. How can you do that? It is it is uh, a straightforward process, it, and, and and obviously any banks if if they have a strong IT department can do it by themselves or an information security department. Can can obviously do the, do it by themselves in terms of doing a gap assessment, ensuring that you follow the standard, designing those uh, frameworks, designing those policies, procedures which ISO 27000 says because they they say about lot of uh, controls, lot of uh, you know processes which you need to comply with, and then you have to build up those uh, uh, forms to ensure that you are practicing those. So if you have to really go and apply for a certification audit. For ISO 27001, you need to show that whatever you have designed, you need to practice through designing of different forms and, and also designing of certain kind of manuals and so on. So this is again a journey which, you know, uh, I will say a journey which a bank can go for because this doesn't take much time. But if, if you are really your size of operations is huge, then it, this can go from any time between three to six months time frame. Uh, in addition to ISO 27001, obviously, I think we talked about the cyber security part of it. And we talk about when we talk about payment system, it, we, we also talked about that how important uh, it is to do a kind of periodic VAPT uh, for, for the payment system and not only payment system. In fact, also for the digital banking pre predominantly if it, since it is a front end system. So, you know, this is a standard process where, where you, you do a VAPT. Ideally, it is recommended that if you are an ethical hacker, if you are a CEH certified, you should do such kind of exercise because that, then that person uh, have the right uh, skill set and also the right knowledge in place to do such kind of exercise. Now, based on our experience of conducting VAPT, uh, we we found that you know you know there are several ways of doing VAPT and there are several methods. You know, you have obviously uh, you can do it from outside with with certain kind of IPs through a black box, you can get much more more access, much more understanding of the of the networks of, of, of the network components of the application, so on. And you can do either a gray box or, 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 a, or, a, or, a, or a white box. The thing which we recommend as a, as a consulting firm is that it is also it is strongly recommended that don't restrict yourself to any kind of particular testing. You know, if you have to, if you do this, and I'm sure you are doing it, you should always do it all in across all aspects. You you should do it from black box perspective, from gray box, and from white box perspective, and from both internal and external also. So this is very important. And 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 I know that you know some of the regulatory bodies have this in place, where you know central bank has mandated for a bank. I can talk about uh, obviously a bit on EV market. 
that you know you need to do this exercise on every quarter so every three months they do uh, such kind of exercise and they have to report it to the central bank uh, i think uh, with this uh, more or less we have covered uh, the different aspects of it audit what uh, we thought of highlighting it to you how you should approach the it audit and the importance of it audit some of the key takeaways from from this uh, from this meeting or from this session which we like to highlight it to you i think we talk about the it audit as a comprehensive way it's not about taking in a piecemeal but rather i will say taking all aspects of technology and doing a kind of it audit that is very important and to do such it audit it is very important before doing an it audit you conduct a it risk assessment at a comprehensive technology level so that is very important uh, i think that is one thing which is a key takeaway from this session the second one is on the application controls part of part of it i think uh, the slide which talks about the different layers of applications uh, again you I have seen banks uh, go for core banking audits or payment system audit or maybe card operations audit but you know if if you have to think about uh, the applications today when we are moving into digital and when we are leveraging you know certain kind of tools like you know ais and machine learning and so on it is strongly recommended that you know you have uh, all your core applications along with your support functions applications and your front end application in place when you go for such kind of application control audit and the third one information cyber uh, i think this is straightforward we talked about it uh, quite a lot on this so you you can think about iso 27001 as a baseline to start on information security but i do understand that you need to have uh, this cyber security practices in place and a proper team who and a proper team and an independent team you know other than uh, it department who should be responsible for information and cyber security that is very important and uh, and also they need this team need to be ensure they need to ensure that you know the your entire technology environment are completely protected from obviously not only in, insider threats but also from external threat threats and last but not the least uh, the regulatory requirement this is must have as as we discussed uh, i think this is to, as a starting point if you have not done it audit and i do understand you have done it audit uh, but then you might not have done the it audit in a comprehensive manner or on holistic manner which we have explained in this presentation if you have not done it i think the starting point will be obviously to start with the regulatory one and then go for a holistic one with the risk assessment so with this i think uh, we we are done with the majority of the presentation we have a couple of slides left on this i think uh, I, i will go through this slide and i will also um, uh, request glen to add more on this uh, so just to brief about grand thornton i think kurum has started with this on on grand thornton and most of you who are there in this presentation know a, a bit of grand thornton uh, so grand thornton is an uh, is an audit advisory and tax firm and and also we as 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 a presentation we have showcased we have a strong capability of doing uh, different work on technology in this case predominantly it audit what differentiate us from from i would say in the market from others is of our experience uh, again experience is not about working previously uh, similar kind of industry or sim similar kind of banking operations and so on or similar kind of technology but experience more importantly that when we do such kind of uh, audits we we take it to the next level when we when we say we take it to the next level we we don't give our clients on on and we don't restrict our clients to, uh, ourselves to give client only on recommendation but more than recommendation as an action plan and also be as a part of their journey and handhold them in in embracing and technologies and mitigating risk on technologies so that is something uh, based on our credentials we can we can say that we have done similar kind of things with other banks Uh, and and we 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 follow the same steps in terms of the subject matter expertise and resources we have a strong team in our uae and azerbaijan offices uh, supported by you know different member from in gcc as well as in uk india us and so on um, having experience uh, with different aspects of banking operations along with uh, along with it so when we say about it audit in banks so we have functional knowledge of banks uh, who has worked on banks before uh, who is an ex banker and also who has has an exposure of technology so who has who knows how to do an it audit so our team is a combination of functional knowledge of banks and technology 
and we bring the right uh, right uh, you know what to say right matching in place for our client uh, whenever there is a need and that differentiate us from from other other partners and last but not the least on on the uh, on the approach part of it you know you have seen uh, the, over the slides we have not showcased any kind of approach but you know we we keep it simple you know it audit is not complex it is as simple as it can be so we keep it simple we have uh, methodologies which we use it uh, across the globe we bring those best practices uh, we 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 have a methodology in place which we not only use it for for our clients in azerbaijan or uae but also using the same methodology across the globe in in, in uk in us and so on so that is the beauty uh, of of using that methodology because it is a standard methodology tested globally and 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 that basically add value to our clients glen do you like to add here anything yeah, well, I think you, you've really covered it there, um, Avik. Uh, you know the great experience that we can bring um, from our local teams, um, be that in the UAE, be that Azerbaijan, um, uh, anywhere in the GCC, and supplemented by that much broader global presence with a very strong focus that we have on, on financial services. I think really adds a, a, another sort of dimension to the. To, to the team and to the the, uh, the the delivery that we provide to our clients, um, and and bringing thought leadership, you know, to 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 the um, to our clients and to the way that we do things as well, and keeping across what's happening not only in the regulatory area with uh, different um, you know uh, adoption of different risks uh, standards, but also using different tools and automation to be able to bring these services to our clients as well as something that really adds a value. To, to our services. I think Avic, that's a good point too. Great, yeah. thank you very much Avic. Uh, thanks uh, George and Glenn. Um, before we conclude, uh, I would like to open the floor for any questions. You can please unmute yourself and ask the questions or you could type in the chat box. We are happy to answer any sort of questions you have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Grand Toronto. My name is Ilgar. I am from Azerbaijan Bank Association. Uh, thanks for uh, valuable uh, practice uh, presentation. It's very interesting for us that you share your insights, your experience with our uh, representatives. And uh, also, we will request you please uh, please share your uh, presentation with us and we will review it uh, again because it, it, there was uh, several interesting slides which need uh, deep insight from our side. Uh, we have a question, for example, I have a question regarding tools. Which type of tools do you use? What kind of tools do you use during application audit? A core in a core banking system and payment system audit. Which type of audit tools, automated audit tools, do you using? Yeah. So, see, uh, when we do a certain kind of application audit, so there are two things which we use it. One is for for the application control perspective. From functional perspective, we have an internal uh, control tool in place where we basically check in terms of interface design, in terms of segregation of duties, and so on. That is an internal tool which we use it as part of functional control from the technical control and from the security control we use uh, any kind of uh, PAPT tool uh, such as NASAS and so on uh, to ensure that you know it is protected also from the external environment so these are the or uh, I will say tools uh, we use in terms of automated uh, tools but having said that you know just to answer you when we do such kind of audit it's one part is using the automated tools as you rightly asked and there is another part that where we actually go deep dive you know when we talk about banking audit you know one thing or rather core banking audit or payment system audit the underlying infrastructure is another important point which we look at so we don't restrict ourselves uh, only on doing it from offside or using the tool but we physically go and review the infrastructure uh, maybe in your data center or disaster recovery side and try to understand how where the where it is hosted how the infrastructure has been you know, design and so on. So both physical review as well as automated tool we use uh, to to do such kind of audit. Okay, thank you, thank you. Any any questions from from participants? Uh, 
Uh, I have also one question regarding duration of audit. You have you told that you have several type of audit, general control audit and uh, SWIFT uh, audit and also ISM means audit. What is, what's the duration of this each audit? Approximate duration, uh, scope and duration of the audit. Okay, so that, that's a good question, sir. I think uh, as we discussed during the presentation, I think uh, it's very important to perform a risk assessment before we go such kind of audits, right? Because, you know, the duration of the audit can vary based on your operations. Now, if, if your operation, if you have, say, for example, uh, you know, maybe 100 branches in Azerbaijan, your duration of, say, for example, an IT audit or IT GC audit uh, will be different from, from a bank which has 10 branches, say. Okay, it depends on your complexity of the operations. It depends on, on the nature of your operations also. Having said that, I think risk assessment is an exercise based on which we can define the importance of different audits for your organization or banks and predominantly how much time or effort is necessary. Okay, that is how we do it. But again, you know, it, it will vary to answer you if you have to answer you how, how much time it takes. You know, for just for example, for an IT general control audit, it might vary from three weeks to six weeks. For a payment system audit, it varies from four to eight weeks time frame. So again, I, I'm just giving you dummy number based on our experience, but the ideal time or ideal time it will be necessary for your bank, say for example, to do an audit will be derived from, from, from the risk assessment after we understand uh, your banking environment. Okay, thank you. Uh, question, if somebody has question, can write in the chat side, No question. Okay, thank you. I think uh, thank you for interesting presentation. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Elgarbe. I think yeah, your questions were also very valid. The and I, I think Avak has explained um, the automated tools we use and you know physical verification of the infrastructure. As I said, when we audit, we look into infrastructure. We look into the policies. And then we look into the operations. So we cover the the holistic uh, area, and and we ensure that you know at the end of the day, the purpose of of this assignment or uh, or the purpose of this exercise is to ensure to block the the frauds either internally or externally. And we have recently seen that uh, the industry frauds uh, have significantly increased during the COVID-19 pandemic period. And that is based on the recent studies we have seen either because of lack of oversight by the by the top management or due to the the different working environment like working from home situation. So uh, tools and and uh, um, and the systems working from home are more vulnerable to, to attacks than sitting in a closed banking environment. And the third area is, you know, changes in the existing processes because of the pandemic situation. So because of this, we have seen uh, increases, uh, increase in frauds, either through, you know, creating shell companies to obtain loans and then later on default, uh, phishing emails to harvest credentials and hijack the business accounts. Um, that's why b banks are now using two or three tier security controls, either on the, the card operations or on payment operations. So for example, SMSs, and even on the top of SMSs, certain banks are using uh, mobile devices with, with specific codes, uh, because sometimes the, the when hackers uh, hack the, the account, they also hack the mobile phone. So they can also get to access to the, to the SMS function. So that's why certain banks are using the three tier uh, security controls, which is which is, I think, more important for the banks and also for their for their customers. So as we see that uh, COVID-19 has made, you know, many, um, many uh, experts redundant and many IT experts redundant. And that's why they are more busy in all these fraudulent activities. And also the liquidity pressure on certain businesses uh, also enhances the, the cyber attacks. 
Uh, on the other side, we see if we have more digital banking, more is the is the risk uh, of of cyber attacks and uh, attacks on the information security. So of course there is a there is a tough job ahead uh, for our IT teams. Having said that, I hope uh, the um, uh, the webinar was um, interesting and uh, helpful. Due to limitation of time, we uh, we had to just cover the topics in in reasonable details. We will share the slides. We will uh, share the recording of the of the presentation as well. However, in case uh, any of you believe that you need more of personalized training for your bank only, we are happy to help. If you if any of you need uh, help in uh, in terms of ISO certifications or IT audits or testing the design phase or operating phase, we are also happy to help. With this special again, thanks to all the participants and uh, and and Abba and our experts. Thanks, George. Thanks, Avik and Glenn. Thank you. Taking your time. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks. It's our nice. pleasure. Right. It's our pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I wish much. you all of you, you well to do a year ahead and please yeah. remain safe. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Same, Thank you. Same. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you, Karam. Thank you.